Hi there everybody and welcome back to another video. This time we're going to be looking at the American Tier 1 light tank, the T1 Cunningham. We're going to have a little review, look at the gun choice, equipment choice and strategies. Not forgetting uh, the fact that it's the most fun tank at Tier 1, although perhaps not the most friendly for beginners. Okay, so firstly we're going to have a look at the shape of the tank. As we can see, when we look at it from a side view here, it's got quite a long nose and there we go, see quite a long front there, turret at the back and we've got these distinctive frog lights at the front and this gives it some characteristics and some styles of play which we'll have a look at later on. Okay, moving on, we've got a choice of two guns on this tank. Firstly we have this one here on the left and yeah, it's alright, but this one here, the second gun, is by far better. It's better in practically every way. The only problem is with it, if we have a look carefully down here, it's an autoloader, so it's got five shells in the magazine, and those five shells are fantastic, because it's got half a second reload in between them all, but then you've got an eight second reload for the full thing. Okay, and that could be leaving you in a potential situation where you're going to be in danger. Okay, So you can't fire during that 8 second reload. You're going to be vulnerable. So that's a slight disadvantage. But overall, I recommend this gun. Unlock it as soon as possible. Get it installed. But be aware, you're not going to do any sniping in it. Because if you look at that, it's got a maximum range of 400 meters. That means anything past 400 meters, you're not going to be able to penetrate. And even getting close to that, your penetration values are going to fall rapidly. So it's not a sniping tank. One thing, with that aiming, that dispersion, you're not going to hit a bar do barn door uh, from range. And even if you did, you're not going to penetrate it. As we can see, it's got a 41 kilometer top speed going forwards, which is, I think, the fastest of all the Tier 1 tanks. It's also got a traverse speed, so the rate at which it turns, of 43.81. So that makes it very nippy. It's good at driving fast round corners and moving around and wiggling in and out. Its specific power of 17.47 hit uh, horsepower per ton means it can accelerate up to that top speed fairly quickly. So what you can do with this tank if you can isolate an enemy tank so it's just you and him. So what you can do is get up behind him, get really close using your speed and agility and then fire three or four shells in with that autoloader in under two seconds which should be enough to kill any tier one tank and then you can run off to safety to reload and move on. Now for crew skills. And seeing as it's a light tank, I recommend camo like I've got up here. Um, and if you look at the tech tree you know, over here, uh, you'll notice that camo is actually quite useful for the first four or five tanks. Okay, you've got four or five options including the T2 light, which I don't recommend at first. Um, quite a fun tank, but won't recommend it. So you get RT followed by light tank, both useful for camo. TD, again, camo, really useful, and then you get the medium. And again, camo is quite useful, you might want to go for other things, but it's not bad carrying camo over into it. Quite a fun little tank though, and uh, that'll probably get a review at another time. So, another reason why camo is useful is because the M2 light is probably what I'd recommend going to afterwards. It's a quite a good tank. It's similar play style, it's got top speed, 58 kilometers per hour, specific power of 30.24 horsepower to tons, which is very good, it means you've got really good acceleration. On top of that, it's surprisingly well armoured, the 38 mils frontally on both the turret and the hull, and 25 mils on the sides and back. Uh, and then, it's got the gun as well, okay, the gun is very useful, you get this one, okay, the, the last gun is useful for learning the tank, but I prefer the 20mm Hispano, which we had a look at just a second ago, which has got a very good rate of fire and is capable of clipping tanks. Okay, so one last little look at the stats. As we can see, it's a pretty useful tank. The armour will bounce stuff. Now, if we go back at the tech tree, I also quite like the American light tank routes. Okay, so you start off the M2 light go up through to the Chaffee T37s and they're all good fun tanks once you figure out how to play them. Now let's look at the rest of the stats, starting with survivability. So, firstly, your armour is only 9mm thick both on the turret and on the hull, 
in the front and 6 mils at the side which means you're unlikely to bounce any shots. Now, one thing that can give you a bit of protection though is your tracks on the side. They take up quite a lot of the tank and sometimes you can get hit on those and the tracks will absorb the damage. So when you're fighting one of these, aim above the tracks if you can uh, for the better chance of doing damage. Your turret is also curved so you can bounce shots off it but I wouldn't rely on that for any kind of protection. It's highly unlikely to happen and your concealment is relatively good, 17.5 when stationary and 13.1 when moving means it can move around and retain quite a lot of camouflage and if you range is alright at 280 as well so pretty good tank altogether. Alright, on to shell types. You probably want to get gonna take mostly armour piercing. You can take a few extra APCR for their extra penetration capabilities especially if you're coming up against tier 2 tanks and some of those have got some armour that will be problematic by the AC but penetration is better with the APCR AP, uh, oh sorry, HE can also be useful it's got extra damage, useful against lightly armoured targets in fact, things like the medium one you maybe want to fire a, uh, HE where you get 27 to 45 damage compared to 23 to 38 because the penetration of those HE shells will still go through a medium one now let's look at equipment. Starting off the standards, I wouldn't really go for binoculars or camo nets because you're going to be moving around too much and that's the idea, you don't want to be sitting still, it's not a great sniper tank so you're not going to get a chance for those to activate. I guess you could go with the improved ventilation, if you've got a spare 50,000 and you want to keep the tank that's fine, it'll improve all your stats. Uh, other equipment, spool liner, don't go for that because 20% of nothing is still nothing. Coated optics, that could be really useful gives you extended view range when you're moving. However, at 500,000, you probably don't want to spend that much money on a tier one. Same thing for the gun lane drive, plus that's a bit meh, because you're not really going to be sniping. Last of all, toolbox could be useful if you've got one lying around. Now let's have a little look at a battle. So I'm about to go into a battle here on Winter Himmelsdorf. Three maps you can get a tier one, Winter Himmelsdorf, Mines, and also Mittingard. Only difference between Winter Himmelsdorf and Normal Himmelsdorf is Winter Himmelsdorf is snowy so you have to buy extra camo. Nice move. Wargaming. Now this is a truly random battle. It's the one straight after so it's not a particularly great scenario. Also I'm going to let it play with the sound effects as recorded in game which means you're going to have a little bit of interference because my mic's crap. Anyone wants to buy me a new one? Please do so. Seeing as I'm relatively light and fast and nimble, I'm going to go up and over the hill. Down this way. Try to come round the back and get some damage in the flanking. Again, I can't really rely on the armor. But at the moment, I'm looking at this mini map. I'm seeing all the teams pouring straight forward, which is a great idea, okay? So, a lot of the battle ends up being taken up down here, especially on this part. Banana Road, down the eight line. That's a really good place, certainly when you get to heavier tanks. I'm up. So I've got to be a bit careful here, especially because at the moment I don't have XVM installed properly. I can't see who's been spotted. I've got a count from that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, who's been spotted. So I know there are another six around somewhere. Those T1s. Do I love my team so far? Now, long nose, turret at the back. If you find an obstacle in the T1, you can reverse out of it, just show your turret. Shells in press C to reload. So now I'm going to get into some trouble here. So we've got that Swedish tier 1 tank coming up now. Probably do quite a lot of damage. Bounced off him somehow, twice in a row. Not so unlucky that time. But again, 
still not looking good for the team. 4 9 down. And he kills me. I right, managed to put two shots in two, and I should have just held my finger down at that point. I might have got that third shot and he killed him before he killed me. Okay, so as you can see, by going that way, I've hidden that front part of my tank from him and only exposed my turret. Although the turret's not going to bounce any shots, what it will do in this situation is minimises the amount of target that you can aim at. And that's a good thing for me, because it means that there's less, more chance of him missing, and by protecting, by not driving out the front way, I've protected all of this, if I zoom out here, all of this whole area down here has been protected from fire. So if I'd have driven out forwards, that would have been sticking out and I've had to have come out even further and he'd have been shooting me before I had a chance to shoot him. Clearly, battle about to end. This medium one. Not really done a great job for us by hiding at the back there. Uh, I might have done something further during the game. It's only a matter of time now before he dies. And you should notice there's an M1 about to sneak, MS1, sorry, about to sneak through to him. But he's, yeah, completely overwhelmed. Fired his shot, now he's going to die. Okay, so, back in the garage now. Uh, if we look at experience, we've come top. 251 damage, so I did more damage than anyone else on my team. 16 shots fired, direct hits 11, because that gun is not accurate even at close ranges, you've got to bear that in mind. 9 penetrations, so 2 of them bounced off that Swedish tank, which is a bit annoying, because if they'd have penetrated, would have killed him, then gone on to do more. So, altogether, yeah, a bit of a meh game. So, that's the MS1. Any questions, please put them in the comments below. Remember to like, subscribe, and I hope to see you on the channel soon. We'll have a look at the different types of ammunition in the next uh, video, before also having a look at uh, the LOL tractor, the tier 1 German tank, or the like tractor, as it's properly known. Okay, take care, and have fun tanking. Again, apologise for all the strange noises when I'm talking. Unfortunately, my mic's crap. Uh, for re-recording this narration, I've made a simple pop filter out of a, an old coffee filter. So, I'm appealing for donation and or sponsorship to get a new mic. So, I'll put a Patreon link down below uh, if I can figure out how to set it up. And if any company wants to send me one to use to get rid of all the plosive, please do so. Thank you.